Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of The Blue Light, a Japanese dramatic thriller from 2003. Now this one is a bit of a deep cut, not a film most people have seen, and I've been meaning to cover it for quite a while, but it just recently became available on YouTube, so I need to take hold of this opportunity to review and recommend it. Now our main character in this is a teenage boy named Shuichi who lives with his mother and younger step whose name is Haruka. Now, near the beginning of the film, his estranged stepfather, who is an alcoholic abuser, suddenly returns home and begins to freeload off of his family. And then one evening, the father harasses the sister and even makes certain advances towards her. And at that point, Shuichi decides to find a way to get rid of this guy. Now, unfortunately, he discovers that it would be very difficult to do so legally since he is Haruka's biological father. So, the mother asks the boy to just endure the situation for a little while until the sister becomes old enough to legally reject her father. After that, they could probably kick the guy out, but they need to suffer through these circumstances until that happens. Now, there are some positive qualities that give the blue light some multidimensionality. Now, the film opens in pretty energetic fashion, with an English language rock song plays over our protagonist, Shuichi, who's riding his bike and racing to get to school on time. And this kid has some charisma, you know, he has some close friends, and he likes to talk a lot. And he has this appreciation for imagination as like a concept, but not in the way that you might think. He considers imagination to be like the driving force of life that sets mankind apart from the, uh, the animals, so to speak. And he also has some serious guts and a drive to do some very risky things. And uh, his interaction with his classmates, very nicely drawn. And there are some relationships that seem a little bit cold at first, but you soon realize that these kids have history and actually like each other more than you initially think. So there's a lot of kind of multidimensional aspects to how this kid lives his life. And he does seem like a normal kid which is nice to see because sometimes a movie with like a serious, realistic, domestic conflict at heart can become too gloomy too fast. But that's not the case here, which really helps to kind of balance out the intensity. And it also ensures that the movie does not get too repetitive or monotonous with like a dreary tone. At the same time, though, there's definitely an intensity to the blue light. You know, as soon as the stepfather shows up near the beginning, there's immediate friction. And, you know, our protagonist even kind of yells at his mother when he realizes that she's allowed this slime ball back into their house. But then she eventually kind of explains the situation, which is a bit more complex than it seems on the surface. And uh, there are definitely some red flags regarding this guy, that he's, he's a pretty bad guy. And you get some clues early on regarding that. And, uh, you know, the stepfather does some pretty messed up things. This isn't like a Category 3 movie or something, but he, he insinuates a lot of things that are very inappropriate, and his attitude is terrible, and he's just a, he's just a slime ball. Uh, you certainly get the feeling of danger within the household, and it's, it's well done. And this creates some legitimate scenes of suspense, and a lot of it is slow burn suspense. There are multiple moments where I was kind of on edge, and the other thing that helps to establish the suspense is that there's a welcome unpredictability to things. You know, there are a few things that happen in this film kind of surprised me. And there were some subplots that ended up flowing nicely into the main storyline. Uh, also, whenever the cops show up, they're very sharp and intelligent, and they play an important role in the film. Everything's uh, very nicely crafted. Performances are good. Now, the first time I saw this lead actor, uh, Kazunari Nino Mia, was a, he did the co-lead role in Gantz, the live-action movie from 2011, and I thought he was pretty bad in that film. So when I saw him here, I was a little bit concerned, but I have to say, he was actually quite good in this film. Maybe he's just better at, like, low-budget dramas compared to bigger-budget manga adaptations, but uh, he did a good job in this. Anne Suzuki is also in this. You may recognize her from the movie Hannah and Alice, 
but her role in the blue light is somewhat limited. She has like a limited supporting role. Decent amount of screen time, but not significant enough to be like a co-lead. And then there's a surprise cameo at one point, which I'll let you discover for yourself. So The Blue Light's just a very solid film, top to bottom. Pretty impressive, has some intensity, it's got nice balance to it in different aspects, and it's maybe a little bit different than what you might expect. I kind of left things a little vague. But uh, it's currently available on YouTube with subtitles. I'll actually include a link in the description box below because it's kind of hard to find if you just uh, search for it. And as always, folks, I'll see you next time.